please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one great nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Clerk, if you'll please read the announcement and call the roll. September 13, 2016. Please be advised this meeting is being taped for video and audio broadcast. Assisted listening devices are available. Want to get <laughs> Mr. Bonifant. Here. Mr. Porcello. Mr. Hempstead. Mr. Kimmel. Here. Mr. Sacinelli. Ms. Melendez. Here. Mr. Sarasas. Present. Ms. Bowman. Here. Mr. Sims. Present. Mr. Kites. Here. Ms. Maggio. Present. Mr. De Palma. Ms. O'Toole Giandurco. Here. Mr. Igneri. Here. Mr. Livingston. Here. We have 11 present, we have a quorum. Next item on the agenda, acceptance of the minutes, the regular meeting, August 23rd, 2016. Do I have a motion? Mr. Livingston, uh, any corrections, deletions, additions to those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstention carries unanimously. Next item on the agenda is public participation. In Prior to public participation, I would like to make uh, one small announcement. Uh, there was a, an expectation, I believe, that the Go Ape Treetop Adventure would be on the agenda for this evening. It's not on the agenda. There's been much discussion among council members and so forth. And um, I would like Mr. Sims, the chairperson of the Public Works, I'm sorry, the uh, Recreation and Parks Committee, uh, to explain or to talk about the issue. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, we, we had some uh, some conversations in committee, and uh, we, we, we heard a lot of the concerns of the uh, residents of Cranberry. Um, and I think, you know, we, we came to the conclusion that uh, it, was, it was in the best interest to um, to uh, not not send it back to committee and let it die in committee. Uh, I'm sorry, not, not to send it back to the full council uh, for, uh, for any further discussions or actions, and we let it die in committee. So at this point, there's no more... Uh, action is going to be taking place or discussion is going to be taking place uh, in regards to the uh, treetop adventure. Now, thank you. And um, we want to make it clear that the council did hear uh, from a lot of people and it is an example of the community's voice being heard loud and clear and the council responding. So uh, basically the issue of the treetop adventure at Cranberry Park is no longer an issue. It has died. <laughs> Next. Uh, is public participation. Deb Goldstein. Thank you very much, uh, members of Common Council. Deborah Goldstein, 66 Osborne. Um, I'm here to speak to two items on the agenda. One is item nine, motions postponed to a specific date. Notwithstanding the, the uh, presentation just made, uh, this item was tabled to date certain in the minutes of the March 22nd meeting specifically states Mr. Sims moved to table item to September 13th, 2016. He did not move to send it back to count up to committee. Um, and I think a quick check of Mason's will show you that such a motion is never intended to be able to provide the opportunity to have it die without further action, I think you would have had to bring it back to the agenda. But more importantly, I want to spend my time on item E6, the Municipal Master Agreement for Preliminary Engineering Projects. Um, given the number of uh, CONDOT projects that are affecting Norwalk in recent years and in years to come, one of the things I would ask that you do is look at this contract very closely to preserve whatever rights you have of representation and negotiation on behalf of the residents. 
This is a council who was very reluctant to join the COG because they were worried about losing some sovereign power and ability to govern the municipality. But you're going to sign an agreement which for the next 10 years will sign away many of those same powers by contract. Um, and I would urge you to look at Article 7 where they commit you to the design standards in various engineering publications and suggest that the language be amended to include the clause provided that the municipality shall have the right to request the exercise of any discretionary exception procedure outlined in the engineering publications, approval of which shall not be unreasonably withheld by the DOT. I would also suggest that you take a strong look at the conflict and revisions to manuals, Article 20, whereby the, COT, the DOT determines in its sole discretion the, to use the strictest standard when there's a conflict amongst any of the paperwork and any of the manuals. And I would urge you to negotiate a mutual negotiation of the acceptable standard in that case, not to be unreasonably withheld on either side. We have had a lot of conflict here where the residents have come and asked the council to stand up for us for a very variety of things in engineering contracts. And very often you have to come back and tell us your hands are tied because you'll lose the money, because you don't have the authority. Please don't sign it away in a contract for the next 10 years without taking a good hard look and figuring out where you can preserve the power to stand by us when we need you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Goldstein. There is no one else signed to address the council. Is there anybody who might have come in late and would like to address this council on anything that's on the agenda? Okay. Seeing none, I will close the public participation session. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is resignations and appointments. Uh, under appointments, we have two. We have uh, Mr. Joseph Passero for a regular position on the Zoning Commission. Do I have a motion? Mr. Mayor. Ms. Shannon, uh, Ms. Gian Durko. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, although I just formally met Joe this evening, um, I've known of him and his business for many years in Norwalk. I know that Claps has been a strong uh, force down in South Norwalk and really does great things for the city and has a great reputation. So I'm happy to see him join the Zoning Board and I'm sure you'll bring your expertise to this. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Bonifant. Thank you, um, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Uh, tonight I can't support either one of these two appointments, mostly because uh, it has nothing to do with the individuals. I'm sure they're qualified and I'm sure they're gonna, you know, they'll end up having the votes and, and I'm sure they'll do a good job. However, neither one of them reside in District A and I think that uh, I've, sub I've submitted a couple names from, uh, that, from Republicans from District A, and they were both shot down. And if, I mean, it doesn't take much to observe that it, that it would appear that the leadership blocked them and kept the vacancies for their own districts. People who live in District A should be upset. But they won't have any representation on the Zoning Commission. Meanwhile, there are a lot of projects planned for the middle of town. Um, including uh, a lot of changes in high density projects and parking issues. And um, so if anyone's keeping score on the uh, makeup of the zoning commission after tonight, you'll have including seven regulars and three alternates makes 10. Out of that, you'll have two from B, three from C, three from D, two from E, and zero from A, and I can't support it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bonifant. Any further discussion? Mr. Sarasis. Uh, I, I also, I will be abstaining on, on this vote, and it has nothing to do with uh, qualifications of the individuals. I, I've, I was born and raised in Norwalk. I know the Claff family, not personally, and I'm very proud to have a family company like that that has become quite a success story in Norwalk. I know that uh, this gentleman and the other appointee know the city and would be great choices, however, uh, I echo a lot of the sentiments that Mr. Bonifant is uh, speaking to, and it goes a little bit further for me because I, I, 
I really would like to see someone from District A appointed that lives in the urban core, like I do. And there really is no one that lives in the urban core that is, well, there isn't anybody from A. And uh, nobody has been brought up either in the past or tonight that happens to live in that area that is a high density area now that has one, two projects that they're in the middle of, one that's a controversy, a different project behind a library, uh, High Point, and uh, the next development in the uh, parking lot between Main Street and High Street. So uh, for that reason, I am going to abstain. Uh, I'm not going to vote no because I think that both of these individuals are qualified. However, by abstaining, I can show that I, I'm supporting the people that voted for me. And uh, I have lived there my whole life, and it would make sense to have someone that lives in that direct area have a say in what goes on in that area. So, Thank you, Mr. Sarasas. Further you. comment? Um, I know both these gentlemen, and I uh, think they're excellent uh, appointments to the Zoning Commission, which is a very, very important uh, board. I also believe that they recognize that all areas of the city of Norwalk are important, and all areas will be uh, treated fairly and decisions will be made accordingly based on what's good for Norwalk. I uh, know Mr. Passero uh, when he used to sneak out during open end at Norwalk High School when I was the police officer on duty there. Uh, <laughs> and so we go back a long, long way. And he still got good grades in school. I don't know how he did it. but. Uh, and Mr. Rowena has been a very respected attorney throughout this community for many, many years. And uh, again, both highly respected individuals, and I'm very proud to be putting them forward. So uh, if there's no further discussion, uh, all in favor of Mr. Uh, Passero? Opposed? Abstentions? So we have uh, nine in favor, one opposed, Mr. Bonifant, and one abstention, Mr. Sarasis. Motion carries. Congratulations, Mr. Passero. Next appointment is Mr. Richard Rowena, a Zoning Commissioner Alternate. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Kites. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I've been asking uh, Mr. Rowena and I and others to get involved in city politics. He always uh, ran for the hills. And uh, I'm glad to see you finally, you know, stepping up and helping your city out um, on, this, on this side. And your, 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 re your resume and your, and your reputation in Norwalk precedes itself. I'm looking here, you have over 40 years experience with real estate law which often dealt with zoning regulation. So I'm very happy to see you, uh, you know, here. And uh, I think you're going to do a fantastic job. Thank you, Mr. Scott. It's further discussion. Mr. Igneri. Oh. Go ahead. I, I've known Dick for about, I don't know, 15 years now, Dick. And I've had, I've used him as a lawyer, and I've often turned to him when I had questions about zoning. And he's an excellent choice. He knew, the, he knew the rules and regs uh, quite well. So I look forward to working with him on the zone. Ms. Maggio. Um, I have known Mr. Rowena since 1973, which makes for kind of funky math since I'm only 29. <laughs> um, I have known him to be a wonderful person inside and out, but more importantly, he's an extremely intelligent man who in this category of zoning um, is almost a necessity. So thank you for stumbling and maybe having one too many drinks and finally getting caught <laughs> and put, being put in this position. I think you're going to do great. <laughs> no, he said he was running. He finally stopped running. I don't know why. Thank you. Any further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying, or please raise your hand. All opposed and abstentions. The same vote as the uh, first one, uh, nine in favor. Mr. Bonifant uh, votes no, and Mr. Sarasis abstains. Congratulations. Motion. <laughs> so gentlemen, gentlemen would come down in the center here. The clerk will administer the oath of office so you can begin your duties immediately. There's a meeting downstairs. No. <laughs> you thought you were going to go get lunch, didn't you, Allison? No. <laughs> Joseph K. Passero, having been appointed as a regular member of the Zoning Commission of the City of Norwalk 
do solemnly swear or affirm that you will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office according to your best skill and judgment, so help you God, or upon the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Congratulations. <laughs> And you keep one. We don't give frames. <laughs> <laughs> Not in our budget. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Mr. Rowena, you are Richard Rowena, having been appointed as an alternate member of the Zoning Commission of the City of Norwalk, do solemnly swear or affirm that you will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office according to your best skill and judgment. So help you God, or upon the pains and penalties of perjury. Thank you. I want that call when you realize how long he's been in Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. Congratulations. Yeah, you can't leave it. Hello. Joe. <laughs> we'll get over Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. And I thank both gentlemen for their willingness to serve. As we know, some of these boards and commissions meet many times, and it's very difficult uh, for the amount of money they receive uh, each month in their paycheck. Very difficult to sit through some of these meetings and give up a lot of times. Just like at work. Just like at work. <laughs> okay. Next item on the agenda, Mayor's remarks. I just have a few. Uh, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., we're going to be celebrating the grand opening of the new Norwalk Early Childhood Center on Allen Road in the old Roosevelt School. Uh, it's a class, it's a uh, uh, early childhood education program with, I believe, six Allen, six classrooms that helped uh, somewhat uh, with the overcrowding in our schools. Uh, and the program there, I heard, is remarkable. And if you would all like to come along for the tour of the building and the ribbon cutting, I'd love to see you all there. Uh, we're excited about it, and I thank Alan Lowe for his hard work on it and uh, the other people that put a lot of time and energy into it. So uh, that's tomorrow morning at uh, 10 a.m. Tomorrow afternoon, we're going. the city uh, is going to be sponsoring its second uh, trades fair down in uh, the South Norwalk Community Center on South Main Street. We have uh, assembled probably eight to ten of the trades unions who are going to be there to talk to young people who may be interested, young people and maybe not so young people, who um, are looking for gainful employment and good employment. Um, and they have a program which is, I like to refer to as uh, Earn While You Learn. Uh, they would become an apprentice, either a carpenter, mason, electrician, plumber, or whatever. They would work during the day, and there is a program at night where they would go to school for several years, free of charge, and they would become certified through the state of Connecticut in whatever discipline they've chosen. Uh, this tomorrow night. We hope to have a big crowd. We have a lot of development projects that are taking place. Um, we've been meeting with some of the um, uh, contractors explaining to them how important it is for them to hire local and to make sure that we give the job opportunities to the people in Norwalk. And then with this program, there's a greater likelihood that we'll be able to pro provide for them a good, solid, uh, talented workforce. So that's tomorrow from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock at the South Norwalk Community Center. If you'd like to stop in and uh, talk to any of the young people and help encourage them, uh, sometimes that little extra word of encouragement goes a long way to uh, helping them make a decision that's going to change their life for the better. Uh, on Saturday, September 17th at 10 o'clock uh, at uh, Cranberry Park, by the way, we're going to be naming the Cranberry Park entrance road after uh, Joe Cody. We're going to be calling it Joe Cody Way. Joe um, was a very dedicated employee of the Department of Recreation and Parks for many, many years. Um, all who knew him, loved him, respected him, and realized what an asset he was to the city. <laughs> And uh, he passed away a short time ago, and it's been, well, I think, a little over a year ago now. And it's been decided that um, we would name that uh, after that uh, entrance way after him. So if anybody wants to come to that at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning, again, council people, um, it's a good way of showing support for the Cody family. They'll, they'll be here as well. Mr. Kimmel, council president. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on the council business, first, I'd just like to uh, comment on the uh, 
We had an excellent event, a 9-11 commemoration on Friday, Friday morning in front of City Hall. And I'd like to commend, I know uh, our city clerk, Donna King, did a lot of work coordinating that event. And I assume other folks like Irene Dixon in the city clerk's office uh, helped out a lot, making sure that it was a great event. Our firefighters and police were there. And uh, I hope we continue to do this for years to come. Uh, last week, the uh, Finance Committee of the Council met, and we had our first discussion of what's becoming a yearly uh, a yearly discussion in the Common Council where we look at senior tax relief and we find and we figure out how much money we can afford to increase you know the uh, the credit that our seniors are getting and uh, we've committed ourselves to once again in the upcoming budget this winter and spring to up the credit we're looking to see look we'll we will be looking next uh, month at some, some different scenarios to see which one we will decide on. It will eventually pass through the Ordinance Committee, and I hope we can make this a, a yearly endeavor. Uh, it's a great program, and uh, that, along with our, with the state program, we can provide a fair amount of tax relief to those seniors who need it. Uh, finally, uh, I, I want to commend a former mayor, Knopp. He's done a wonderful job as part of the steering committee on the coalition that looks as of now, uh, may have achieved quite a remarkable accomplishment uh, in its case against the state of Connecticut regarding educational funding and a variety of other issues. I asked them specifically, because in Norwalk we were preoccupied with the ECS formula, if the possible, because the judge's ruling was so broad that the ECS formula may get lost in the discussion that's going to take place in the next uh, 180 days as the legislature looks to uh, come up with some remedies to solve the problems that were delineated in the judge ruling. And he said it's a complicated issue. They're going to try their best, but it's a broad coalition. And some of the towns and some of the folks in the coalition, their perspective may not be the same, the same as ours. Uh, but bottom line is we've got to do all we can in Norwalk to uh, try to make sure that the legislature does address the, the core issue as far as Norwalk is concerned, and that is to do to, to make major changes in the ECS formula. As an aside, this issue of funding education through property taxes puts us in a bind every year. And I read a report in the hour this yesterday morning, I think it was, from CCM, their annual report. And we're a little bit over 88 percent of our uh, of our spending in the city for for uh, education comes from property for overall spending comes from uh, property taxes, and that's a terrible pressure on municipalities who are trying to hold the line on taxes. So let's hope that this ruling leads to something special and our budget cycles in the years to come are uh, much, uh, much easier than they have been in the past. Okay, thank you for, your, uh, for listening and uh, our consent calendar, uh, Faye Bowman. Thank you, uh, Council President. Um, our consent calendar reads item B1, approved proposed ordinance changes on Norwalk Code Chapter 15, Animals and Fowl. Item B2, consent to table, proposed ordinance changes on Norwalk Code Chapter 96, excavation and encroachments in public streets and grounds. Item C1A, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Willing, to execute a contract with Hoffman Landscapes Incorporated for the Oak Hills Park Fountain Garden and Great Lawn Improvement Project for a total not to exceed 190,000 account notice. Item C1B, authorize the Office of Building Management to issue change orders on contract for a total not to exceed $10,000. Item C2, authorize the Mayor Harry W. Rilling to execute an amendment to McNeil Design Collaborative Incorporated Design Services contract for Oak Hills Park Improvement Project for Additional design services for a total not to exceed $7,000. Account noted. Item C3A, authorized the Mayor Harry W. Willing to execute an agreement with Silver Petroselli Associates to provide architectural design services for the West Rock School exterior windows and doors replacement project for a total not to exceed $67,525. Account is noted. Item C3B, authorized a contingency for additional serves at services as may be required for a total not to exceed 6700 Item C5, authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to the ergonomic group for laptops and desktop computers for schools for a total not to exceed 84600 Account noted. Item C6, 
authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to Apple Store for Education Institution for the purchase of MacBooks and iPads for schools for a total not to exceed 24961 The count is noted. Item C7, authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to CWG for the purchase of Chromebooks, carts, headsets, and tablets for schools for a total not to exceed 151206 The count is noted. Item C8, authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to Hovercam for the purchase of TV monitor and cameras for a total not to exceed 2136 The account is noted. Item C9, authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to school outfitters for the purchase of Chromebook tech tubs for schools for a total not to exceed $4,826.50. Account is noted. Item C10, Authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to BlackRock Technology Group for the purchase of Logitech keyboard for schools for a total not to exceed $1,368.75. Account is noted. Item D D1, authorize mayor to sign the mayoral certification for the PY41 caper. Item D2, approve the advancement of the PY41 caper to HUD. Item E1, Authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute the third amendment to the agreement with CDM Smith Incorporated for tasks one through three identified in the supplemental services proposal revised 810-2016 for the South Norwalk TOD pilot program for a sum not to exceed 48,770. Account is noted. Item E2, authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to CN Wood Company for the purchase of two 2016 Elgin Pelican three wheel high dump me mechanical street sweepers for a sum not to exceed 370,000. The account is noted. Item E6, resolved that the Honorable Mayor Harry W. Rilling is hereby authorized to sign the agreement entitled Master Municipal Agreement for Preliminary Engineering Projects with the state of Connecticut in accordance with letter dated August 10, 2016. Item E7, authorize the purchasing agent to issue a sole source purchase order to Cargill for treated road salt for snow and ice control. Pricing not to exceed $88.87 per ton for normal and after hour deliveries. <clears throat> Effective for the 2016-2017 winter season, account is noted. Item F1, Authorize the Mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to enter into an agreement with the Exchange Club of Norwalk to contract for the parking at Cath Pasture Beach, Shady Beach, Marvin School, and Taylor Farm for the annual Norwalk International In-Water Boat Show to take place on Thursday, September 22nd, 2016, through Sunday, September 25th, 2016, for a sum not to exceed 4,500. Account is noted. And thank you, Ms. Bowman. Uh, bear with me. I was reading something, and I, ha I have two short questions to ask you. Did you, as personnel A1, is that one consent? Personnel A, oh, sorry. And personnel A1 is also on consent. Um, approve the updated assistant civil engineer job description. Okay, and my second question is under ordinance B2. Could you reread that, please? Um, I read it as consent to table for both. Oh, sorry, consent to send back to committee. Yeah. To table to committee, proposed ordinance changes on Norwalk Code Chapter 96, excavation and encroachments in public streets and grounds. Okay, th thank you, I appreciate that. Okay, any changes in the consent calendar? Oh, Ms. Uh, Mich Michelle. Michelle. Michelle is fine. Imagine, Michelle Um May I also take off under public works um, number six, because I had a question. They described it um, differently in committee as to what Ms. Goldstein was talking about earlier, and maybe the, um, Mr. Shimento can just give some clarification on that. Okay, of Thank course. You. Okay, that will be off too. So, uh, all, so we have the consent calendar as read by Ms. Bowman, as amended <coughs> by Ms. Maggio. All those in favor of the amended consent calendar, please raise their hands. Okay, the ca consent calendar passes. Thank you very much. Next meeting, Mr. Corsello will be reading the consent calendar. Thank you, Mr. Kimmel. Um, Mr. Livingston, item 7C4. Uh, 7A C4. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Uh, item four, authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to CBS, that's Connecticut Business System, for the purchase of smart boards and projectors for schools for a total not to exceed $65,994, account noted. Uh, I'll move this item, but just one comment about it. Um, this is one of the seven items that uh, six others were on consent. This is a recommendation for approval ordered by the IT Committee of the City of Milwaukee. Mr. Kimmel. Uh, Mr. Valenzizi, can I ask you some questions, please? Good evening. We've had, we've had this discussion before, and unfortunately, I was not able to make the Land Use and Building Management Committee meeting. And you probably have some idea what we're going to talk about, okay? Uh, and it's an issue, as I'm sure you will agree, will get more and more complex if we, as we go into the future, and less and less will we, we will be depending on paper textbooks. Yeah. So we are uncomfortable of having to items before us which we really can't say no because they have a direct impact on the delivery of uh, curriculum in Newark Public Schools. Uh, we're the last to get this, and we're not we're we're a legislative body and not a board of ed. Now, my concern is I, I appreciate the IT committee going through this. But well, my concern, as I've expressed in the past, the Board of Ed makes a general recommendation for X amount of money in its capital budget for technology, which includes a variety of things. But as far as I know, it does not get into the details, the, the, the bidding, the procurement, and things like that. So my concern is, since the Board of Ed recommended its, made, uh, adopted its capital budget recommendation, have they considered these detailed proposals? Has the Board of Ed considered them? Um, on these specific ones, usually when we do bring up the capital uh, budget uh, recommendation, uh, like you said, I do actually go through and map out exactly what we're purchasing. So it's all within the exact scope that's there. So there's a certain amount that's allocated towards projection systems. There's a certain amount that's allocated towards computers. And, you know, within a very small minor adjustments that usually happen, depending on changes in program and so forth, and also sometimes when I can actually get a better price from the time that, you know, we talked about at uh, six months earlier, um, they, they, do, they do go through that process. And any questions on the capital budget, I'm, I'm always happy to answer for the board. So, so, so when the Board of Ed, let's take the example number four that, that we took off. The Board of Ed... <coughs> When they were discussing their capital, the capital request for technology with you uh, last, last spring or yeah. winter, uh, they were aware that the, uh, the purchase order to CBS, Connecticut Business Systems, for the smart boards would cost 65000 they, they had the exact information and details. They, they had a, a bucket that I would say basically that, you know, projection systems are going to cost approximately this much to be able to replace. But did they know that we would be buying them from this company? Uh, no, that, that was actually because that's on state contract, so. Okay, now, so you all work from the, the state contract on all of these to get... At, a at times. I mean, there's some things that are not on state contract or sole source, mm -hmm. so like Apple computers. There is no other vendor that we go to. We go directly to Apple with those. Mm -hmm. um, each year we put out to bid or look at state contract, whichever one seems to be the best price for Chromebooks. And with these, um, with the projectors, CBS has been a longstanding partner with us too, and they are in state contract, so they're very familiar with our schools. So, makes them so, so my overall concern is, is that the Board of Ed approves a broad capital budget. It's dealing with a variety of things, you know, with, and from facilities, the technology, uh, and yet, when it comes down to the months later, to the actual contracts and the, and the details, uh, it's up to the IT committee of the city and the Common Council to make the final decision. And we are in a position where we do have. There are, fortunately, there's some folks on the on the land use commi committee that are quite knowledgeable in this kind of stuff. And I understood the discussion was quite productive. Yeah. But nonetheless, uh, we're in a position where we can't say no without really wreaking havoc in our schools. And that's the thing we're uncomfortable. And no other 
issues come before us where we really can't say no. And I, I'm still uncomfortable. And I think as technology progresses, we are getting further and further over the division in state law between what a legislative body can do vis-a-vis -vis education and what a board of ed can do and what we're not allowed to do. And in five years or 10 years, education, if all of the curriculum is delivered through technology, and we're the ones who have final say on technology, I, you, you gotta admit we are flirting with, there's some questions about what we're, whether we're doing, what we're doing is whether it's legal under state law. If we're way over the line when it comes to the prerogatives of the council. We could theoretically vote this all down and I won't even ask you what would happen in our classrooms. And the state law is supposed to prevent that from happening. So I, I'm going to support it once again. But what I would like to, to see going forward, at least, the very least, is the, the Board of Ed to, to develop either a technology subcommittee or technology committee. So at least we don't know more about the details of their technology projects than they do. I just think it's, we, we've, this thing is backwards. And, yeah. and uh, we've had this discussion before. Yeah. Uh, so I know the Board of Ed has got a lot on its plate. But this, is, this has got to be addressed. Technology can't be left to the Common Council. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Further yeah. discussion? I, I just, just wanted to add that I, I agree completely with Bruce. And one of the problems that faces that faced us, well, we're, we're going to, yes, I'm going to vote for it and support it. And uh, wherein the confusion lies, for example, uh, I'm looking at this, and I know I need IT for what I do. And uh, I, I see Apple and uh, products, and I know that it's a closed system. And I, and, I, and I also know that you need to have uh, software like Excel and Windows. You have to purchase you know, that stuff to add to it. So there's another cost that might be associated that we don't see. And then there's a question of, you know, if they're using them to, to do video or whatever, which I do a lot of, I know that you have to reformat to be able to even put it online on another website or put it out there. So once again, you know, I'm piggybacking as a specific because a lot of us have specific questions when these things come up. And even though I use technology and I use an Apple product, it made me concerned as, you know, I see Chromebooks and then I see, you know, MacBooks and I wonder how they jive. And, and those are, you know, and they might jive and there might be a way that it all works out. The problem is we have nobody in our room that can answer that question and here we are, we're supposed to approve things. So I'm just piggybacking on what Bruce said. I agree with him completely. And I know I do my due diligence like, uh, like almost everybody and everybody here does. And it puts us sometimes in a position where we have a question that we can't answer and we may be completely for a project and you know, therein lies a little bit of confusion. Yeah. How to no, move forward. That's, that's definitely understood and I do think you know, it, it really is a good point because once again, I'll, you know, just addressing the Apple issues, you know, with our art labs, what we do, we actually meet and talk about curriculum and there's a specific reason why those are being purchased for those areas and stuff. And that is discussed within, you know, um, whether it's within the board or whether it's within also the curriculum committees that we have and so forth, bringing it up. And technology is kind of the backbone that's happening. So, you know, uh, Mr. Kimmel, your, your, your point's very, very well noted too with me because it is becoming the backbone of everything that we do. So, you know, the, to deliver any type of curriculum or instruction, we need to have these pieces in place. Um, what I will do is, um, I mean, I don't know if exactly if this is actually in my place, but I will bring it back to the board to make sure that we look at actually creating some kind of subcommittee to be able to look at these items and then if, there's, if there needs to be a, you know, another type of approval process. I don't know exactly what the steps would be to make that happen, but. Right, I, I appreciate it, just if, if I may. Uh, because theoretically, in some respects, and it'll increase as we go forward, uh, we have as much or more control over the Board of Ed curriculum than the Board of Ed does by our votes on these technology issues. And that's, that's not how it was set up to be. And, and I think we just have to, as technology moves so fast, we have to sit down and figure this out. We're doing it the way we've done it for 15 years simply because it's a capital expense. 
okay? And we have certain rules in the city regarding capital expenses. So we have to figure out how to, how to cut through this. Uh, of course, the council needs to have a lot of input, but after the Board of Ed is thoroughly vetted and vetted and vetted, and the council has been involved in the discussion, okay? Or just take it out of the capital budget and put it in your operating budget, which I'm not sure we want to go down that route. It would cost us a lot of money, a lot of additional money. I, I get it. So let's figure out a way through this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Capola, I think yeah. if I could just make one suggestion too for moving forward. One thing I think we have to do to address Bruce's issue, which is a legal one as to um, can the uh, city council vote on um, uh, how the Board of Ed technically should spend its money, which I, I don't think is the intent here. The intent here is to get somebody to approve these expenditures. And I think the reason it's here is because uh, our, the city's IT department is involved with uh, the purchase of tech, uh, equipment and technology, uh, software, et cetera, for the Board of Ed. Is that correct to some extent? Well, our, I mean, our, our, we, have, our, we have some subcommittees that we go through. The thing is that these are actually capital expenses. That are actually uh, and equipment, so it it's actually falls under our, our capital expenditures. Um, if you know Bruce, Bruce uh, excuse me, Mr. Mr. Kimmel brought up a good point that if it was under an operating budget and stuff, that would be actually something that would be included. You know, but but yeah. I think it's, at some point we should just try to figure out to what extent the city's IT department is involved with these decisions as well um, to figure you know how to proceed with uh, uh, making recommendations for what to purchase and then who should be approving it. Yeah. Definitely. I know, and I know that, like I said, Kara, you know, Mrs. Delvecchio and I talk on a regular basis. She also includes me in that same ITT committee, so we all meet as a whole group to really discuss any types of, any types of technology purchases. Mr. Sarasas? Uh, based on everything I just heard and what you had said about the discussions you're holding, would it make sense just to help us understand uh, what we're voting on and the issue that I have, I have already said that we include it in our in in our in our packet if we ever vote on this again, so we can read what you what the discussion entailed between yourself and and the subcommittee that uh, you know explains why we get a, a computer like a, a MacBook that is a closed system or that needs more purchasing of software to work. I mean, I understand it's used for graphics, for art, animation. I, I get it. I, I do that too. But the other issues I talked about about compatibility that help us just make a more intelligent, qualified vote here, instead of you know us voting because we know we'll, as Mr. Kimmel said, bring the, the system to a standstill. And, and what will happen? Maybe maybe we should include in our packets in the future that if we have a vote like this, you know, notes from that discussion, just, just sort of giving us a general explanation of the how, how it'll work, why it'll work, and uh, it'll make sense to us why that we, we have different things coming at us from different, you know, uh, makers of the of, of this technology. Does that make sense? No, it does, definitely. And I, you know, like I said, I don't want to belabor this, but I know, you know. I don't either, and I won't say anything <laughs> else, I promise. You know, what, what, I, what I used to do when we did get uh, purchases through the Common Council, I, and it, it was actually at the beginning of when we started using smart boards, was one perfect example, is after the approval, um, I was more than happy to, and I did some tours at times, if anybody ever wanted to come out, I could set up a night where we can actually go out and actually see what the equipment is and how it's used as well. I mean, so that's something that I know in the past, uh, you know, um, Alan has set up where we've had meetings at schools for the land use committee, and I've been able to actually explain it at that point to a little bit more in, in, in detail to the, uh, to the subcommittees on, on what it is. But I, I'm always more than happy to, to do that if, if anybody ever wants to reach out to me. Um, there's a lot of great things going on in the school system, and I'm sure that we're always happy to show off and showcase what the students are doing. So. And we'd like to know that, too. Yeah. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Item carries. Thank you. Mr. Livingston. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to move items 11A, B, and C together and then propose an amendment. Uh, authorize the Mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute an agreement with PowerPoint Energy for the Belden Main Library Energy Efficient Lighting Retrofit Project. Terms of the agreement shall include the following. Total project cost not to exceed $152,980. Rejected incentive amount $96,012. Net cost of the city to be financed by Eversource $56,968. 11B, authorize the Mayor Harry W. Rilling to execute any and all documents necessary to apply and receive energy incentive funds 
from Eversource from the Belden Main Library Efficient Lighting Retrofit Project, and 11C approved to establish a contingency fund in the amount of $8,000 to cover projected related expenditures, account noted. Um, I'd like to also move an amendment to item 11B. Uh, I would like to wor add the words and financing after incentive funds on second line so that it would read, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute any and all documents necessary to apply and receive energy incentive funds and financing from Eversource for the Belden Main Library Efficient Lighting Retrofit Project. Um, first, we'll talk about the, the, the resolution as a whole. This has to do with um, the retrofit, as it says, of the lighting at the Belden Library. And this is um, all new energy efficient lighting. And part of this uh, project, as you can tell from the resolution, is that it's going to be financed essentially by Eversource, either through a projected incentive amount or through essentially credits on future payments. And so the purpose of the amendment is to simply authorize the mayor to enter into financing agreements, which this is really a technicality on this resolution itself. Is there any questions? Mr. Lowe is here to discuss anything else. Any discussion? Mr. Bonifant. Um, just to help out Mr. Livingston, I believe this project will pay for itself in less one, than yeah, 1. 1.7 years. Right, less than two years, and uh, we're going to have cheaper electricity and um, better lights. Further discussion? You know, this is why this Mr. Kites. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and, and the amazing thing about this is it's said and done, there's little to no out of pocket cost for the city. And I'm sure I don't have the numbers in front of me, but the, the electricity savings will be tremendous. I see the same company that actually did City Hall, so and we had great results here. I want to thank Mr. Lowe and everybody. This is uh, this is great. I know this, the Board of Ed is doing the same thing, so this, this is good. This is good to see. Further discussion? Uh, I also would like to thank uh, Mr. Kites and others who are working throughout the city to find energy efficiencies wherever they um, make themselves available. Retrofitting lights, uh, solar energy, all the kinds of things that we need to do in order to be a greener city, uh, more sustainable energies, and um, as I always like to say, being good inhabitants of Mother Earth, because if we take care of her, she's going to take care of us. Uh, and we've made some wonderful strides. Uh, so, Mr. Sims? Uh, yes, Mayor. Yeah, and I, I too, uh, um, they're, you know, I'm very glad that the city is moving in this direction. Um, you know, just uh, a few years ago, I actually made um, made a recommendation as, as in, you know, as one of the initiatives that uh, I was uh, that was very close to me about. Uh, and I was moving to uh, solar energy, um, and I, I'm glad that the city is moving uh, in this direction now. And hopefully, that we can get uh, every public school and uh, as well as city hall uh, on on the solar energy um, <clears throat> uh, 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 usage and not not depending on. You know, uh, going off the grid, and maybe that, that also maybe make some money for the city, where we can also sell electricity back to uh, some of the electric companies. So I think we're moving in the right direction. I'm just glad of the great job that uh, all the staff is doing, as well as the council. Further discussion. Seeing none. All in favor of uh, of the item as amended by Mr. Uh, Livingston. Item 11. Um, um, C, 11, A, B, and C. All in favor, please signify. Opposed? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm for it. Okay, <laughs> abstentions. Uh, motion carries unanimously. Uh, Mr. Ignari. Item three. <clears throat> Approve the necessity for the abandonment, discontinuance of a portion of Bates Court beginning at the northwesterly boundary of the property located at one Bates Court top tax lot noted and heading south sa south to the southerly terminus as depicted on the map prepared by William W. Seymour and Associates entitled Property Survey for the Abandonment of a Portion of Bates Court and Acquisition of the Properties from the City of Norwalk prepared for the Metropolitan Realty Associates LLC, Norwalk, Connecticut dated August 5th, 2015, last revised August 4th, 24th, 2016, at a scale of one inch equals 20 feet on file 
from the Department of Public Works for a fee of $14,400 and appoint freeholds. Mr. Agneri moves the items. Mr. Agneri, would you like to comment? I'm just going to comment that what we're doing here is saying there's a necessity to abandon this property and let's appoint freeholders to look at it and see whether what the value is and uh, have a hearing at, at some future date. Any further discussion? Mr. Bonifant. Thank you. Um, and my discussion is related to the other two items, two, which are part of the same project. I just wanted to make the comment that, uh, well, I want to say my comment now, as opposed to when it comes back here and t people tell me it's too late, it's already been done. So I just want to say that both of these parcels, it was going to be up, up in the air whether they should be going to um, going to bid or not in, through the process because uh, the other one of them's got uh, a quarter acre there for $35,000. All I want to say is if the developer gets their way and bypasses the bidding process, process and, and and goes forward as you know the as the next neighbor the abutting neighbor who wants to purchase it I think if they get the privilege of skipping the bidding process they should pay a premium on the price that's right and just and I want to make another comment that these things haven't even gone to a public hearing yet but they're already working their way through the zoning commission thank you thank you mr. Bonifant further discussion Seeing none, all in favor of item uh, 7D3, please signify. Opposed? Abstentions? So 10 in favor, one abstention, uh, one opposed, Mr. Bonifant. Mr. Ignari. All right. Now that we've proved the necessity for the abandonment and we will appoint freeholders, we will next in item 4 schedule a public hearing to hear the freeholders report and any public comment on said report for the abandonment discontinuance of a portion of Bates property, Bates Court, I'm sorry, beginning at the northwesterly boundary of the property located at 1 Bates Court, tax lock noted, and heading south to the southerly terminus as depicted on the map prepared by William W. Seymour and Associates. Uh, entitled property survey for the abandonment of a portion of Bates Court and acquisition of properties from the city of Norwalk prepared for Metropolitan Realty Associates LLC, Norwalk, Connecticut, dated August 5th, 2015, last revised August 24th, 2016. The scale is one inch to tw equals 20 feet. Um, it's on file in the Department of Public Works for a fee of 14 1400 a public hearing shall be conducted in order to hear all parties interested in commenting on the acceptance of such a report determine if the freeholders report is in the best interest of the city and to take such action as said report that the committee may deem advisable a public hearing is scheduled for Tuesday October 4th 2016 at 7 p.m. in room 231 second floor in Norwalk City Hall, 125 East Avenue, Norwalk. So now, after approving the necessity to do this, we're approving the public hearing and setting the date for the public hearing to get the, the findings of the freeholders. Mr. Agneri moves the item. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying, or please raise your hand. Uh, opposed? Abstentions. Ten in favor, one opposed, Mr. Bonifant. Mr. Agneri. Okay. Number five. Uh, we've scheduled a public hearing for Bates Court, and uh, now we're going to set a public another public hearing. Um, it's okay with everyone. <laughs> I'm not going to read the description of the property, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. I'm just going to go down to the last part, which says, on this property so noted, the public hearing shall be conducted in order to hear all parties interested in commenting on the sale of the parcel to the abutting property owner or its affiliate for the appraised value of $35,900 to 
to determine if the sale is in the best interest of the city and it takes such action on said property sale that the committee deems advisable. Uh, any further discussion? Mr. Uh, Ms. Bowman? Uh, yeah, I mean, I am on this committee, but in some of the things, I think one of the things that was going to happen even before the public hearing is that we were going to check with any of the department heads to see if anyone, all of the department heads to see if anyone has use of the land. Um, and the public hearing, as, in, in, as of my understanding, will allow, um, if there is anyone that has any opposition or any um, recommendations, to still comment on, on at that time. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Sarasis. I'm just curious, at this public hearing, w will this public hearing also address the issue that Mr. Bonifant brought up? Will, in, in, in other words, will the, uh, can the price be changed w w to reflect the premium he's asking for to be paid on the property? Is that possible at this? Is that, that, does that, Mr. Would, would that be possible to happen after this public Mr. hearing? Mr. Lowe and Mr. Cimento? Uh, some of the uh, members of DPW committee first saw the kind of guideline in terms of the process. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the, one of the first thing we do as staff is determine the property was buildable. If the, if the property working with zoning department return of the building is buildable, we usually go for a proposal process. We don't autom automatically offer it to the adjacent property. So we offer to adjacent property when it's like a narrow piece of property, there's no value to anybody except the adjacent property owner because it's not sellable, it's not buildable. But this property, I believe, hearing from public DPW staff is that it's buildable based on the compensation zoning. So typically our process would be advertised and typically we have a proposal process and typically we don't bid it out straight because the different groups comes in may have a different purpose of property within the zoning regulations that allow the city to look at price and the proposed development potentials. So it's, I mean, my recommendation is that we, have, we do a public hearing just as, for the purposes the public can input on whether the city should sell the property, get rid of the property. And that basically where the public hearing ends. Mm -hmm. And the city's decision is that, okay, so we can go, go for a proposal process mm -hmm. and it would be a sealed proposal. I mean, the proposal would come in, we reviewed it, and then we could look at the, the proposed uses and the price offered. So it's not the, the dollar amount here, typically we don't even mention the dollar amount. We may put a minimum on it, but at the same time, it depends on what the proposed user it could be $100,000 or it could be $10,000. So it is a variable that we want to, we want the, the city wants the ability to evaluate those proposals and get the best benefit, whether it's use or whether it's price. Okay. Any further questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the item, please signify. Opposed? Abstentions. So we have 10 in favor, one opposed, Mr. Bonifant, and the item carries. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is six. Yeah. This one only. <laughs> <laughs> Resolve that the Honorable Mayor Harry W. Rilling is hereby authorized to sign the agreement entitled Master Municipal Agreement for preliminary engineering projects with the state of Connecticut in accordance with the letter dated August 10, 2016. So moved. And would you like to speak on the item? Do you want to? Okay. No, I, I think that um, how I understood it when Lisa uh, Burns ex explained it to us was that it was just a contract so that all of the projects the department head could agree on and or sign or go into contract with without it having to go to the mayor and come back to the council on every single thing that was I didn't think it was giving up our our control of any of the projects that were happening around here. Am Mr. I correct or no? I don't Mr. Shimento. That is, that is correct. Um, it doesn't, we don't give up anything. It allows us to negotiate with the state on certain small projects that they have. It also allows us to apply for grants, grants and aid for 
various different items in the, in the city. For instance, um, uh, traffic control items, um, traffic lights. Uh, we're, we're right now applying for a $2 million grant from them to be under this contract. Uh, they have various little contracts that they, they have that would affect us. It allows us to negotiate. It all goes through the DPW committee. Uh, for instance, the replacement of uh, the West uh, the West Rocks Road bridge over the um, Merritt Parkway is part of this. And it's a contract that's been brought forward. It allows us to be part of that, part of the planning, part of the construction, part of the traffic control. Um, and it, it allows us to, to keep our hands uh, really on <coughs> any of the projects that the state is doing uh, in the town. It allows us to negotiate certain items. Not so much like the walk bridge that's too big, that's too big a problem. That's a, that's, a, that's a project by itself. Um, but some of the other smaller projects, we have, there's a project up on um, New Canaan Avenue for uh, repaving and redoing some um, uh, drainage which we're involved with because we review all of that stuff and approve it. It allows us to keep our hands into what they're doing. Mr. Ceresis. So just to set the record straight, if we didn't sign this, then we wouldn't be able to negotiate and be a part of the projects, for number hands, one. Be hands off. And number two, we wouldn't be able to apply for any available grant money. That's correct. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Next item, Mr. Ignary. Make a motion to adjourn, seeing no further business. <laughs>